Again, very wordy questions, right? But how do we interpret this? What, we're not looking at exponential growth in well, we're looking at exponential decay, right? Because we've got a, something that's just come off the boil and then it's cooling down. So I think the first thing to recognize is what are we looking for? And we're looking for exponential decay here. And again, they give us, this is example two, t is equal to 20, should write this down, plus 80 e to the minus kt. Okay. I want to show that this is a solution to this. Yeah, a lot of T's going on here. So how am I going to show that something is a solution? Again, we're thinking about derivatives, right? So I have this expression here. Let's take its derivative. So what are we differentiating with respect to? Well, we have a capital T. We're differentiating with respect to little t here. Be careful of any negatives of how that's going to affect your derivative, right? Yep. And that is uh, 20 plus 80 e. So you want 20 plus 80 e to the negative kt? Yeah, and minus, uh, minus 20. Minus 20. Okay. Then we could bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. How do you feel? Minus. Minus? No. So what is this 20 though? This 20 is a, it's a constant number, right? So when you take the derivative of a constant, it just goes away. Yeah? yeah. So just kind of recognize that when you're looking at this, these are separate terms, so you don't have to include that at all, right? Because when you take the derivative of this part, it's just going to go to zero. This negative k is right, we're dropping that power down. Um, with the derivative of the power, um, and then we have this component here, okay? But then showing that this satisfies this, you have to do a bit more work, right? We have to show that, hang on, how do I incorporate t minus 20? Hopefully you can recognize that now from this section. All we're doing is we're just saying, well, we just put 20 to the other side, a to e to the negative kt, right? So I can say that's equal to negative k outside of t minus 20, okay? Very common question. Asking to show that something is a solution or so something satisfies, just getting comfortable with that process of differentiating and making substitutions. Okay? We, had, we didn't have to use any of the initial information there. Okay? But anytime you want to start finding values, we need to do that. Because in the next part, then we want to be able to find k. That's the next part of the question. I said that was a. Now, how do we find k? Yeah, yeah. No enough space on the sheet, eh? Uh, so I didn't show that. Oh, you just skipped a part of well, let's double check, right? At t equals to zero, good point. We get t is equal to 20 plus 80 e to the zero. Oh, there you go. Wow. Did you get 100? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Boiling kettle, 100 degrees. Checks out. Still part of A is then find K. Yeah, right. Sometimes they do that. It is a bit strange. They incorporate questions within questions, Seriously. right? Well, how are we going to find K? Anytime we want to find actual values, we need to incorporate conditions, right? Because there's not enough information here right now to actually find out what K is. We need to substitute values in. Mm -hmm. So we've already tried to substitute the initial. The initial will help you verify, right? But it's not going to help you find K because what happens to K here kind of... It goes away, right? So it's not helpful. Right. Not helpful, right? What can we do? Sure. There's another one in the question. What do they tell me, Eva? Five minutes later. Yep. So five minutes later, or t is equal to five, capital T is 70 degrees. Okay, so they can disguise information in certain ways. Um, they're not going to explicitly tell you, you know, t equals to five, capital T equals 70, but you know, five minutes later, 70 degrees, we need to be able to interpret that information here. But once we've done that, we can substitute it into our expression, right? So 70 is equal to 20 plus 80 e to the negative 5k 
Don't forget that negative because we're dealing with exponential decay now, right? Well, underneath all of that, really, it's just an exponential equation, right? Just with an extra constant there, okay? Once you've interpreted the information that you've got and you've rewritten the expression, right, now you've got the easy part. We can just solve and pretty good at those now, looking at using logs to solve these, right? Oh, 50 equals to 80, e to the minus 5k, so subtract 20 from those sides. We divide both sides by 80, so we get 5 on 8, because e to the negative 5k. And then what am I going to do here? Someone? Okay, so you get your, um, your, your log. Logs of both sides, cool. Natural yeah, natural log of both sides, good. Oh, LN literally means whole log natural. Is that what it says? I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out. Um, then we use our power rules, right? And then it does, you know, the math's onto something here. LNE is just one, so... Yeah, LNE is just one, so it goes away, simplifies that. So then negative... Oh, actually, we just say K is equal to, yeah, LN. Yeah, I'm just going to note something here over the negative five, right? Can you note something, please? Well, so if I rewrite this, this is not really necessary, but just to show you, right, LN518, um, I was talking to Mr. Peel and, and talking about like your hydrogen ion content when you're calculating pHs. Oh, yeah. And they're always, I think in some situations they're less than one, but we want a positive pH value. So with your pH calculations, you always have a negative constant here if your hydrogen ion content is less than one. Okay, so that's just something to realize when you get into logs in chemistry, that that's why there's, you multiply by a negative here to get a positive value, because if you evaluate this by itself, it'll be negative, right? Correct. And our k value. What is our k value? Three decimal places. Yeah, what do we got? 0 0.094. 0 0.094. Keep going. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, so in this question, they've just asked you to find the value of k, which we've done, okay? But we need to incorporate that into pre next questions. Make sure you're using that exact value there, okay? Don't use any rounding situations here, okay? No rounding. How long will it take for the water temperature to drop to 25 degrees? Okay, so how long will it take to drop to 25 degrees, which is essentially asking capital T is 25 degrees. What is a little t going to equal to? Okay. Little t? Is he actually a rapper? <laughs> it does sound like little t and big t and they do a collab or something, right? That'd be cool. The, the alphabet, the alphabet crew. All right, so substituting values, right? I've got my expression, I've got a K value now, okay? So I know that I want the temperature, or capital T, to equal to 25. That's equal to 20 plus 80E to the negative KT. Now with K, what, remember what I said about K? Keep it as K. Right, keep it as K, why? Well, because what I could do is I could write, you know, what is this? Negative, negative one on five, ln 518 times t, if I really wanted to be, you know, showing that I know what k is. But think about writing that for every line that you're trying to solve for what t is actually gonna be. It's a bit, you know, tedious. So, let's get rid of that. Instead we can just write negative kt, but just forget that you actually know what that is. We know. All right, so let's go and solve, All right? Eva, what do I do? Yeah, let's get rid of these constants. So we've got five is equal to 80e to the negative kt, or one on 16, divided both sides by 80. Yes, that's right. And then let's take the log of both sides again, just like before. Yes. LN of E, which we know that's just one. Yeah, sure. Let's get rid of this 
And so our t value, or how long it takes, is just going to be equal to ln of 1 and 16, all divided by negative k. Let's work that out. Twenty four point four nine five three. Twenty four point four nine. Twenty four nine. Five three. Okay. Um, yeah, we can just do. I don't know two decimal places. How does that sound? Five zero. <laughs> to two decimal places. Okay. There you go. To two decimal places. Five degrees Celsius. One question. Yeah. So now, like in physics, right? Mm. Um, with like questions, mathematical questions, mm. the answer is like we like for the, the decimal places. It's pretty much the amount of significant figures yeah. there are in the question. Is that like an apples? Like they tell you. Is that for like the, the levels of accuracy? I don't know, but it says if you don't have the same significant figures, you're mm. locked down. Yeah, it's definitely more of a, like significant figures is definitely more of a science concept because like when you think about your measuring instruments, if you measure something that has, is correct to four sig fig and you have something that's correct to six sig fig and you like do calculations with those, you can really only have your final answer correct to four significant figures yeah. because that's like your degrees of accuracy kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, in maths, we're like, we're not really as concerned with like the accuracy of instruments um, so it's not something that really applies, but um, yeah. They ask for a certain amount of decimal places. Yeah, it's more like that. And like you said, like we've been pretty flexible with how we've rounded it, right? I've rounded the two whole numbers, I've rounded the two decimal places. A lot of the time they won't actually specify. Don't get too caught up in how to do it. Just what was the important thing I said, you just need to tell them. Yeah, exactly right. You need to write what you're doing. That's right. Okay, so we're done. Are we done? It's like, oh, SOV, you just do this. Wait, no. Yes, James? I'll tell him. 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 I'll tell him.